Hey, it's me, your laptop screen. I know I've got a couple of smudges on me and it's making your picture not as crystal clear. So how about you clean me and to make the cleaning process more exciting while you're cleaning, listen to an episode of this podcast. Before we continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements. First, March is over, meaning that the Raffled Prince charity raffle for Potterless has concluded. We are tallying up all of the donations and we will be picking winners and announcing them in the intro of next week's episode. But I am happy to report that we have donated at least $3,044, and I will be matching $1,000, so that means all of us together as a team raised $4,044 for charity. I am so excited. I cannot thank all of you enough. This is great. This is so fantastic. We've really done some really great work, and we're going to be helping some fantastic organizations. So to every single person that has contributed to this charity raffle, thank you so much, and hopefully you win. We'll see in the intro of next week's episode. Also, since this is the first episode of Potterless in April, that means it is donation time here at Potterless each month, we donate $1 for each member of our team over at patreon.com slash Potterless to a different charity. And at the time of recording, we have 723 patrons, meaning that we'll be donating $723 to the Asian American Advocacy Fund. What has happened to the Asian American community in recent weeks has just been absolutely terrible and horrible, and it makes me so angry and sad and upset. Specifically, what happened in Georgia is absolutely unforgivable. So this charity made sense because the Asian American Advocacy Fund is an organization that works in Georgia through a combination of policy advocacy at the local, state, and federal levels, and by supporting candidates that believe in their values, they are fighting to create a better Georgia for everyone. Georgia also recently passed a terribly restrictive voting rights bill, so it just felt like picking a Georgia-based charity was the correct move here. If you want to learn more about this charity, you can go to AsianAmericanAdvocacyFund.org. And just in general, stand up to any anti-Asian American Pacific Islander hate that you see. It is important that we all try to band together and help this community out. There has been far too many instances of anti-Asian violence, at least happening here in the States, and I want to do anything that I can to help. Hopefully you feel the same way, and hopefully this donation will help the community in Georgia. And also just a reminder that the Kickstarter for my podcast project, Modern Muckraker, is still live. It closes on April 30th. If you want to contribute to the Kickstarter, you can go to bit.ly slash Modern Muckraker, or you can learn more about the show at modernmuck.com. And we talked about that team over at patreon.com slash Potterless. I'm going to give a shout out to the newest members of our team. So shout out to Kathleen, Kristen Watson, Ariana Robbins, Ingrid Nordset, and Dana. A pronunciation correction for Sam Sam Reby and Dana Morphine, who wanted to give a shout out to her partner, Luke, who does smell. And a huge shout out to our newest producer level patron, Adriana Hernandez. Adriana joins the ranks of Vicky, Christine, Aaron, Clown, Marchismo, Juan, Rose, Marie, Marie, Elisa, Audra, Eleanor, Nikita, Rachel, Zachary, Alex, John, Noel, Claire, Rory, Veronica, Lada, Noah, Tracy, Colleen, Jennifer, Justin, Jacob, Maya, Mark, Polly, Zena, Hardlin, Noelia, Nikki, Kine, Amanda, Kafir, Sarah, Marta, Maya, Flor, Georgia, Skyla, Adele, Professor, Threat, Ellie, Michael, Kelly, Kerry, Connie, Jen, Nedry, Will, Marcos, Marik, Ashton, Brittany, Phelan, The Meadows Family, Ginny, Heather, Kevin, Jarl, Peter, Jan, and Callahan, Leah, Bella, Melanie, Becca, Rees, Adam, Joseph, Joseph, Madison, Tonks, Sabrina, Sophia, Farzan, Melanie, Matt, Okamahime, Boney, Pony, Kelsey, Ricky, Taylor, Megan, Riley, Laurel, Erica, Miranda, Kendra, Natanya, Yogan, Darcy, Sandra, Craig, Lior, Demi, Michelle, Henrique, Casey, Megan, Sat, Jack, Sophia, Dane, Robin, Chick, Mermaid, Daddykins, Gregory, Kawkaw, Nina, Ribbon, Brittany, Gavin, Jack, Serenity, Emily, Haley, Sabrina, Jenna, Laura, Gila, Eileen, Annette, Kirsten, Hufflepuff, Brett, Mary, Artemis, Trans People or People, Samantha, Nina, Tatiana, Taylor, Karis, Vomit Spiders, Tony, Joe, Punkfish, Wire Warrior, Catherine, Joe, Michael, Maya, Jasmine, Neely, Tate, Sam, Sam, Steamed Nuggets, and Cat. Potter? Who never, when they're refilling their hand soap and dish soap dispensers in their home, mix up the hand soap and the dish soap so they've refilled their dish soap things with hand soap and vice versa, making just a huge soap-related mess. If you want to be like one of these amazing patrons and get access to bonus episodes, Wizard on stickers, Wizard on shirts, monthly live streams, and more, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Potterless. But without further ado, let's get into episode 171 of Potterless, the first of five, covering the most infamous fanfic ever, My Immortal, guest starring Kim and Sequoia from Fanatical Fix and where to find them. Hello, Internet, and welcome back to another episode of Potterless, the tale of a 29-year-old man who <laughs> never read the Harry Potter series as a kid. It's the first time I had to say it. He's never read the Harry Potter Happy series as a kid. Happy birthday, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, yeah, yeah. It's like about that half ago at the time we recorded. Uh, I never read the Harry Potter books as a kid. I read them as an adult. I watched the movies and stuff, and I've only read a couple fanfics, and it's 
almost always when I'm guesting on the podcast of our guests today. My name is Mick Schubert. I'm the host. But we are joined by what I would consider the two top names in fan fiction knowledge, Ooh. commentary, <laughs> critiquing. Ooh. It's Kim Ooh. and Sequoia from Fanatical Fix oh, and Where wow. to Find that Them. Makes me Kim and Sequoia, how is it going? <laughs> well, Kim's sweaty now. I'm nervous now. I think that may be a... Woo. We are very knowledgeable about... a particularly niche <laughs> part of fan fiction, I would say. <laughs> um, uh, we are so excited to be here doing this specific piece with you yes. today, though. This has been a long time in uh, the three of us chatting and, and thinking <laughs> and looking into the future about this, and it is finally here, and I am stoked. <laughs> I'm very excited. As you mentioned, we've talked about doing this for a while because you two decided not to cover this on your podcast. So right mm -hmm. at the top, what is the reasoning behind that? It really does not fit our format. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's the biggest part. It's long. If we tried to cover this in our regular format, we would be covering it for like half a year. And I can't handle that. <laughs> 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 it's like Picasso's blue period. It's like, oh, this was fanatical fixes my immortal period. <laughs> and I mean, some of our listeners might like that, but I think my brains would ooze out of my ears if I tried to like read this and react to it live for more than <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the reacting live thing is is a lot. I found myself laughing out loud multiple times while reading it. I also found myself going, ooh, quite a bit while yeah. reading it because there's yeah. some stuff that looking back, big yikes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we get into the actual fanfic itself, do the two of you, as people that are more familiar with fanfic, do you have knowledge about when this thing came to be and its history and all that kind of stuff, because my general understanding is that it is just the most laughably bad fanfic of all time. And then there's <laughs> questions about who wrote it. Mm -hmm. And then someone else wrote a sequel, but it wasn't really them. And then it got <laughs> taken down from fanfic. There's like a lot of drama around it. Yeah. Where do you want to start? <laughs> the beginning? Oh, God. <laughs> it's a perfectly good place to start. I mean, I read this around when it came out, but I think I read it on this uh, rehosting site. I must have not found it until after it got taken down. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the author deleted it, but also fanfiction.net has done several purges through its history of the content that I am so sad has disappeared from the internet as a result. Yeah, They uh, would purge like adult materials and poorly written stuff and they would just do it sporadically too. And copyright things too yeah. apparently. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Which when I saw that because the the homepage where it has the story for this it said that it would take stuff down because of copyright and I'm like wouldn't every fan fiction be yeah. copyright? <laughs> that seems like a strange reason. This fan fiction is so strangely in like the pop culture zeitgeist right? Like yeah. right. this is something that goes beyond just just like the Harry Potter fandom and just like people know what it is, yes. especially, you know, uh, the us within our generation. And it is known for being the worst fan fiction of all time, which <laughs> I would argue against in some clearly places. not. We have read a lot of fan fiction and there is <laughs> this is this is. This is exactly what it's trying to be, I would say. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They they are achieving their goal. So they have achieved there it. has been several different times where different people have tried to come out as the author of this piece of work. And they have either taken it back or been proven wrong. And I think that the fascination with who the author of this is comes down to the argument of was this written in earnest or is this a piece of parody? I think it's earnest parody. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I agree. Right? I agree. I think it is written by someone who is a huge Harry Potter fan. Yes. Is a huge goth or at least is into that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then is making this fan fiction very tongue in cheek like where they are taking their love of stuff to the next level and yeah. they have that baseline knowledge so they know the first names of all the relevant lead singers of all the different emo <laughs> punk bands. <laughs> mm -hmm. But now they're just going so dramatic where people are drinking blood and sleeping in coffins, yeah. etc. I think for me at least it was always pretty obvious what was going on with this fan fiction. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. But like <laughs> I went through an emo phase when I was like 13. And then around when this fan fiction came out in 2006, I was past that and embarrassed by it and thought it was very funny. 
And I also mm. really like Harry Potter and Harry Potter fan fiction. So I was like, obviously, this is someone who was really into the emo scene when they were in junior high and is writing a send up of all of that stuff. Right. Right. And I think I think that's where it lands for me. So the author, who the author is, was never that interesting to me. I think the meta narrative that the author wrote in this mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. Tara is beautiful. Yeah. I do have in this moment a confession to make. Ooh. This is the first time that I have read My Immortal. Ooh, fun. <laughs> I mean same, but fun. <laughs> I know Ooh. I've known a lot about it, about the plot. I've read a little snippets of it, especially snippets of outfit descriptions before. <laughs> um, but I have never sat down and read My Immortal and I whew, wow, what a piece of <laughs> art. I'm really uh, surprised. I hadn't read it either. I had only guessed it on a couple of podcasts where we did a couple of chapters. And I think I did later chapters for reference. So far, I've only read the first half. So chapters one through 22. I think I read later stuff where things get really off the rails because I think there was much more death and intimacy and all this other stuff where (laughs) the first nine chapters of this was just so fun <laughs> just like pure bliss yeah chapter 10 and 11 things take a bit of a turn and we they get into some uncomfortable do. stuff yeah but like in the beginning when i was reading these first chapters i was like this is so funny like this yeah. is so good why has anyone said this is bad like clearly it's a parody <laughs> but it's so i left out loud multiple times yeah. yeah so i think before we get into it though there's something we do need to address which is that if you haven't read it and you do want to read it be warned that there is some stuff throughout that is triggering keep in mind this was written in 2006 before we were recording kim brought up that the author of this most likely was trying to do dark edgy humor in 2006 which if anyone is familiar with people trying to make edgy humor back then it's some rough stuff Mm. especially when you're getting into goth emo things you can understandably see where some of this is going there's some self-harm stuff and basically in the story these things that make you go yikes for the most part are so irrelevant to the plot and so quickly done that I think for the coverage, it makes more sense for us to just say at the top that throughout the story, there's a lot of yikes moments that basically accomplish nothing. So rather than bring up every single time it happens, we're just going to gloss over them because they do nothing for the plot Mm -hmm. and only would make us feel uncomfortable and maybe have people feel triggered with some bad thoughts. So we're just going to not touch on them in these episodes. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots yeah, yeah, of yeah. nodding, but, but yeah. it is a podcast. Uh, this is an audio. Yep. Nope. We, we've we been we're podcasting here. for four years. We understand what's happening. <laughs> just impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so if you are going to read this, just be aware of that. There's going to be some stuff that looking back is pretty rough, and we're just really not going to address it for the most part in this coverage of it. So mm-hmm. with all of that being said, shall we get into these <sighs> initial chapters of My Immortal? Let's do it. Oh my goodness gracious. I just, I'm so excited and it's so beautiful and it's so perfect and I just love everything about it except the yikes stuff. (laughs) Exactly. That is exactly, exactly where I'm at. And of course, anytime that I say anything like this is perfect, this is great, let the caveat be known that it is perfect and great except for the yikes stuff. Absolutely. So in the very beginning, we get an interesting setup of how this whole story works in that there is the narrator but then also author's notes, and then also a main character who talks in first person, Mm -hmm. which just right off the bat, (laughs) wild. (laughs) Not as wild as that mistake you just made past Mike. Hey, it's me editing, Mike. How's it going, everyone? What past Mike meant to say here is that there is the author who writes author's notes, and the rest of the story is told from a first person narrator perspective. So Ebony, the narrator, will say things like, I went here, I did this, and then in conversation and dialogue will say, I said this, he said this, etc. Now, while I've got you here, I am editing Mike, which makes me the businessman of this operation, so I want to take some time here to say that if you haven't been listening to the intro of the past few episodes, you wouldn't know that there is currently a Kickstarter live for a new podcast project that Mike would like to launch called Modern Muckraker. This is a podcast where Mike will be playing a character that is fully convinced they are doing the world's most important research by uncovering the hidden truths behind pop culture's most burning questions, but really, these questions are along the lines of when should Spider-Man take the subway instead of web swinging? I want to bring in an entire team to make this podcast a reality. I want to 
to be able to pay them up front. And that is why we're going with a Kickstarter. You can support the Kickstarter for this project and learn more about what the podcast will be at bit.ly slash modern muckraker. Now that this very special once in a blue moon self-promotional business portion is out of the way, let's get back to the podcast. Extre- we just get the, the whole thing starts off so powerfully with an extremely powerful author's note. And I'm always here for an author's note that is confrontational, (laughs) needlessly confrontational, um, nearly incomprehensible, (laughs) talking about their friend who also writes fan fiction, all of these things. I'm so here for it. It hits it in one sentence. Everything we could possibly want in an author's note in one sentence. And we historically love author's notes. Good. Yes. I mean, we get right off the bat the meta joke that uh, the author Tara, the author of the fan fiction Tara. I think there's probably some separate entities here, right? We have the actual author. We have Tara. And then we have... Ebony. <laughs> yes. Ebony to Ebony or whatever. But we get the, the the meta joke that Tara doesn't understand how puns work. Yeah. And it's a lot of you have to sound things out. And it took me a very long time for this first one because they say special fangs, F-A-N-G-Z, and then in parentheses, <laughs> get it because I'm gothic. Keep in mind that most of the time I am saying the actual words here, they are spelled not correctly and intentionally done phonetically differently. Like gothic is spelled gothic, G-O-F-F-I-K. Mm-hmm. This episode will be 12 years long if I point out all of those. <laughs> so rather than me point out every single thing that is spelled wrong, intentionally, unintentionally, whatever, just know that about 50% of the words are (laughs) spelled wrong for effect. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is one of my favorite reoccurring bits throughout, though. The Tara doesn't Mm -hmm. get puns. So funny. Every time. It's very fun. And then always saying, get it, haha, in parentheses. (laughs) <laughs> it's good. Yes, but what's Tara. also fun is that if you read this, depending on what website, if you read it on fanfic or there's another My Immortal site, is that even before you get to the story, there's a message from like the person who uploaded it. And then there's another <laughs> message about My Immortal. Like, there's like four prefaces to what this story is before you even get to the beginning yes. of the story, which then has an author's note. It's so much. Oh, yes, so yes, much. yes. It feels like reading Wuthering Heights where you're like five layers removed from the actual story. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has ever compared my mortar to Wuthering what? Heights before, but what? <laughs> let me do this. We are setting new precedents here at the Potterless Podcast. We're breaking ground. <laughs> wow. So in this author's note, we have the author saying special thanks, but fangs <laughs> to her girlfriend, but ew, not in that way, Raven, oh. a.k.a. Oh, Bloody geez. Tears 666, oh. for helping me with the story and spelling. The and spelling part is so funny. Great. <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. Oh, I was like, what spelling? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious when Raven was helping with the spelling versus when yeah. she wasn't, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> See, I'm of the theory that Raven isn't even real. Oh. I think I think Raven is purely just a plot device yeah. because a couple of chapters later, the author gets into a fight with Raven. Yes. Which is actively my favorite part. It's so the, good. The meta narrative of Tara and Raven, I think, is pretty clearly part of the story. Yes, 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 yes. And it's beautiful. <laughs> the other call out in this author's note is that the author says that Justin is the love of her depressing life. I don't know if Justin gets brought up again ever aside from this first author's note. No. But I think that's it. Is Justin a, an emo band member? Is Justin I don't a think friend? So. I think it might be their friend, significant other, who's to say. <laughs> but then the final line of this author's note, which will come throughout author's notes to come is all caps that MCR rocks. My Chemical Romance rocks, mm-hmm. which, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people rock. A lot a lot of people a lot rock. Of people well, yeah. rock in this. <laughs> so, so now we actually get into the story. <laughs> so we learn that our narrator, the person telling this whole story, is Ebony Darkness. And yes, I did pronounce that with the apostrophe in between Dark and Ness. Got it. Very important. Ebony Darkness Dementia Raven Way. How did dementia sneak into the name here? <laughs> um, because it's gothic. gothic. <laughs> is, is it? <laughs> I I don't know a whole lot about dementia, nor do I know a whole lot about being gothic because I never went through a gothic phase. Is that just me? Just me here? I don't know if mental illnesses really are like, oh, how gothic. My grandpa has dementia. dementia. What a goth. 
<laughs> yeah, I have no idea. They probably just thought it sounded like a cool word. <laughs> it is a cool word. What are you talking about? What What I think it could be is that maybe, and this is a very common thing where they try to say one word and then they say one that sounds similar and it's a completely different thing. So maybe <laughs> they were going for like demented or dementor mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. gothicness, but then they went with dementia, dementia? which mm-hmm. is, if that's the intentional choice, hilarious. <laughs> if they are saying that dementia is gothic, Maybe less hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still maybe funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now we get into <sighs> the first of many descriptions of hair, clothing, etc. And Ebony says that she has black hair with purple streaks and red tips, which... Mm-hmm. Man, I've never dyed my hair for more than just one of those spray <laughs> temporary things that last until you wash your hair, but... Mm-hmm. Purple streaks and red tips sounds hard, but also incredible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ebony looks incredible all the time. The enti- every time. Throughout the entire <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. She never stops looking great. Yeah. I do love that the author comes in right here at the top with what every reviewer always wants. More character descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give the audience what they want. What does the character look like? Yes. What they want. The reviewers always want to know. She looks like Amy Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Which the best is they say I look like Amy Lee. And if you don't know who it is, you're not a true goth. And without Googling it, I was like, I bet this is the lead singer of Evanescence just because this is called My Immortal. And that feels about right. So I did Google Amy Lee and confirmed, confirmed. lead singer of Evanescence. Yeah. So I'm a real goth. I'm not a prep guy. Yeah, we're all yeah. good to go here. Yep. All goths here. <laughs> the the constant MySpace energy that is throughout this entire <laughs> yes. fanfic is so strong. So <laughs> powerful. <laughs> so, another interesting line from this initial narrator note, quote, I am not related to Gerard Way. He's oh the God. lead singer of My Chemical Romance, but I wish I was because he's a major fucking hottie. Now, there's two <laughs> ways you can take this. There's so much to unpack there. I just, A lot like... to unpack. <laughs> The one way to take it is that she thinks Gerard is hot. Thus, if you're related to Gerard, you will look similar to Gerard. Thus, you will also be hot. Right. I think Mm -hmm. that is giving too much credit and too much benefit of the doubt here. Correct. Because the weirder take is, I wish my brother was someone I think is super hot. (laughs) Correct. Way weird. (laughs) Correct. That's definitely the joke there. And I love it. It's it's so... (laughs) It's so... per. It just... A lot of these jokes just like perfectly don't work. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes them work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we learn that Ebony is a seventh year witch at Hogwarts. So she's 17 years old, which I guess makes it okay in Hogwarts terms when other lewd stuff starts happening because mm-hmm. they're adults in Hogwarts world. Sure. Everyone's an adult in every fan fiction I've ever read, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's funny is that everyone's an adult, but in this case, because it is Harry Potter, everyone is 17, <laughs> which everyone. in Harry Potter world is okay, but in our world, at least in America here, is not. Shout out to all the people that flood my emails with the wildest takes of, well, the age of consent in other countries is oh this. My not God. the right take, guy! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the Hermione and Crump thing isn't weird because if you are in no, Bulgaria, every Harry Potter character is 30 in every story. <laughs> That's how I deal with it. It's the only way to deal with it. <laughs> but not only is Ebony a seventh year student at Hogwarts, she is also a vampire. But not only is she a vampire, she has straight teeth. So I'd assume just not. Fangs? fangs? I wouldn't say the vampires have crooked teeth. I would say that they have fangs. So I guess she is just vampire with a regular smile? Yeah, because, uh... I mean, she she often drinks blood, but she drinks it out of, like, a goblet or a bottle. Do you think she filed down her points? Oh. oh. Ooh, was it an intentional thing? That's, like, thing? the opposite of aesthetic. Yeah. But maybe she doesn't want to give away <laughs> the goose that she is a vampire to people, so but it's she how she can But she definitely does. Yeah, she does sleep in a coffin. <laughs> Uh, (sighs) So she is walking around school and of course what she has to do right off the bat is she flips off the preps at the school because preps are the true villains to the goth community here. Yes. And I will say, I did not have a goth phase. I did have a prep phase in oh, middle school. Oh, no. I did. Mike, I have to throw up my middle fingers at you now. 
I do love that throwing up a middle finger is such the seventh grade response to like, this is the meanest thing I could do to someone. And it, like you had to really think mm-hmm. before putting up your middle finger like this uh-huh. is serious. Whereas right. now, like anytime I'm driving, if someone does the tiniest minor of offense, you're getting a big middle finger from me. <laughs> Yeah, and the the preps in this in this scenario, the preps are literally just there. They are yes. just present. They have done nothing to antagonize yes. her. <laughs> Generally in the entire story, they're just existing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and what's also fun in this universe that she has created. I don't know that school uniforms are necessarily a thing, no. but it is funny if you go by Hogwarts where if you go by the movies where people have to wear button down shirts and ties, things that are traditionally preppy, this is just the uniform. <laughs> so I don't know that that's fair. Oh no, are they just wearing the school uniform? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, look at these preps wearing the required clothing. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but maybe they were going full prep, which mm. unfortunately I did from seventh grade to eighth grade where I had... Hollister stuff. I had button down shirts and all that. Some of the stuff was fine, but I, I did have. I never went full prep with like fully bleached holes intentional in the jeans. Like I never went that mm-hmm. far. I always thought that was ridiculous, but <laughs> I did have shirts that, you know, just had a Hollister seagull on it. And I was like, this looks cool. And I did have <laughs> Hollister, w- whatever the cologne was. Oh and I was my like, God, this definitely smell. smells good. Ooh, the yeah. smell. Wow. 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 <laughs> I never went full pop collar, but I did own. <laughs> <laughs> multiple puka shell necklaces. So that's Whoa. where I fell. Like, you looked incredible. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I did. That with the bowl cut, rough look. <laughs> I think the extent of my emo phase was uh, Converse and a zip-up black hoodie that I wore, like, every day. Yeah, I feel like we were on the same, <laughs> we're on the same level of, like, not fully into it. Like, maybe uh-huh. you had Boys Are Stupid Throw Rocks at Them, Angry Bunny maybe, stickers or probably. a notebook, stuff like that. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I came out of the womb a hipster, so nice. everyone has always hated me, and I have always hated everyone. <laughs> jealous. So jealous. Oh. We looked so good. (laughs) So Ebony is walking around the school, flips off the preps, and then Draco comes up. Draco says, hey, Ebony. And Ebony says, what's up, Draco? And Draco says, nothing. And then she leaves. (laughs) That's our first interaction. (laughs) Oh, my God. The plot so far is riveting. (laughs) (laughs) And what makes this even better, because... Absolutely nothing has happened except for description of what Ebony looks like and why preps are bad. There's an author's note immediately at the end of chapter one that says, hey, is this good? Yes. (laughs) Here's the thing about this, though. If they had left it at that, this would be unremarkable because it would be the same as thousands of other fan fictions on fanfiction.net. I have read basically this so many times. <laughs> yeah, this first chapter is yes. is prevalent. It's the way that this author takes it to the next level. That's amazing. They do really elevate it mm-hmm. in some great ways. But they committed to the bit and kept going, which is outstanding. My favorite. At this point in time, is fanfic big enough where she's not only making fun of gothic and Harry Potter culture, but also fanfic culture on top yes. of it? Yes, okay. absolutely. yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We have read stories that are actually, I think, do you remember Gothic Miney, Sequoia? Yes. That story is almost the same as this and is from three years earlier. Yes, mm. absolutely. The combative author's notes, the everyone is a goth for no apparent reason and it doesn't really affect the story in any way. <laughs> This kind of stuff is super prevalent on the website. Okay, good, good. So that's the end of chapter one. Now we're into chapter two. Oh, past Mike, before we get into chapter two, let's take a little bit of a break for a segment that we need in order to keep the show afloat, and that is Wingardium Adridosa. Today's episode of Pottery List is brought to you by Warby Parker. Let's say hypothetically that you are me, Mike Schubert, and you are about to sit down to read the most important piece of literature that's ever been written before, My Mortal. And in order to get in the fanciest mood possible, you want to put on some suave glasses before you read. Where could you get some suave glasses? Warby Parker. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores by offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. They also have 
sunglasses, progressives, and blue light lenses. I am hashtag blessed enough to have 2020 vision, at least for now, but I was able to do home try-on kits with my wife Kelly, as well as my dad, Joel, and they both had wonderful experiences with Warby Parker using the try-on kit. It was very simple for both of them. You can even use the AR system on your phones to use an app that will make the glasses appear on your face. Joel got a big kick out of that, but you pick the glasses that you want. They send you five pairs of them. You try them on, and then whichever one you decide likes the best, that's what you commit to, and you only pay at that point. So why not try Warby Parker's free home try-on program? You order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days. There is no obligation to buy as well. It ships free. It includes a prepaid return shipping label, so you can try on five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash potterless. So go to warbyparker.com slash potterless, get set up with a try-on kit, try them on, pick the one you like, and get some sweet glasses in your life today. And now you'll hear words from a few sponsors who make it feasible for me to be a full-time podcaster. Some of these ads will be read by me, others of them won't. The ones that aren't are inserted locally, so if you live internationally, don't be surprised if you hear an ad in your country's native language. And once those ads are complete, we'll get back to this episode of Potterless. Ebony wakes up in her bed, which is, of course, a coffin. And then she drinks blood that she says she had in a bottle. And I'm imagining like a crinkly plastic yeah. mm-hmm. Nestle like water Aquafina. bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. She just sort of has nestled in her coffin next to her. Sort of like a night water experience, except that it's night the, the blood that you drink in the night. Do you think mm-hmm. night blood is as quenching as <laughs> night, water? night water? I don't think so. Um and she also has the it's hot pink and velvet inside of the coffin. And I think it's important to draw attention to the idea that like this author wants every single thing Ebony touches to be an aesthetic. Yeah. And it is. It is. Mm-hmm. There's not an object that gets described near her, except I guess this water bottle that doesn't like (laughs) have emo bands plastered on it or lace. And she is an icon. But this is also, I think, the last time we see her wearing something normal as pajamas. (laughs) Well, it just says pajamas later on. Leather pajamas exist. So maybe (laughs) maybe it's the leather pajamas and we just haven't gotten the full description yet. It's a a giant MCR t-shirt. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this normal. I've got all the outfit descriptions. Thank you. They're very important to me. (laughs) I'm glad you did because uh, there were so many and they're so lengthy that I did get tired of writing them. (laughs) But they are so good. Yeah. I can't imagine how many like hot topic tabs this author must have had open Mm. to figure Mm. out what Ebony looks like. Yeah, for sure. I also want to make the meme where it's the big book and then the smaller book where it says the thing and then the thing without whatever. Mm -hmm. It would be very fun if it was my immortal and then the smaller book is my immortal (laughs) without clothing descriptions. (laughs) So many. So good. But I love them. I think they're oh, all yeah. great. great. I think it's fantastic. I love outfit descriptions. It's one of my favorite parts of fan fiction. It also made me want to think of like what my my immortal version of my current clothing aesthetic would be. Mm. Just my like over the top, you know, he put on bright electric fuchsia pants <laughs> with a, a button down shirt of powerful teal with <laughs> you know, yeah. bright white iguanas. <laughs> <laughs> His calculator yes. watch glimmered in the sun. <laughs> Amazing. What I also think is fun is that outside, the weather outside, I guess the most gothic thing possible is that it's snowing and raining and at the raining. same time. What, <laughs> so what is that? What does that mean? Wintry mix. Wintry mix, I guess, is now gothic. <gasps> yeah. And another fun thing when she describes her coffin, she never describes black is just black. Mm. Black always has some sort of qualifier. Mm -hmm. So sometimes (laughs) things are gothic black, but in this case, it is black ebony, which (laughs) Which is just just saying the word black black? twice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) With my white ivory shoes. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think it's got to be raining and snowing because rain and, rain and snow may not in themselves be gothic, but the sun is decidedly mm. not gothic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you must cover that up. We have to combat the sun. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really get a lot of like 
Ebony is a vampire and needs to worry about vampire things beyond her drinking s- just so much the blood. A lot of blood. Does she need to worry about the sun? It's unclear. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. It seems like probably not. Probably not. Her vampireness really just manifests in drinking blood all the time and being so pale that she doesn't have to put on white foundation. But she does often put on white foundation anyway. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the foundation aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to see that you've got that. <laughs> Thick layer of What's so fun about on. the foundation thing in particular is that there are instances in the story where she says, I don't need to put on foundation. Mm-hmm. And then there are times where she's like, I put it on anyway. <laughs> I love her. What it's are you so doing? Great. So now we have her friend Willow, a fellow goth, get introduced. And Willow is the character version of Raven, her friend helping her write and spell the story. So Willow wakes up and they start to talk about Draco because she saw Draco and Ebony talking yesterday. We learn that they are both in Slytherin and Draco approaches them and he says that, wildly, good Charlotte is having a concert at Hogsmeade. Hogsmeade is just like hopping. It is like the the hot concert spot. Yeah. I want this Hogsmeade to exist where they just have (laughs) regular stores and concerts all the time. (laughs) Huge improvement. Huge improvement. (laughs) For the 10 students at Hogwarts. (laughs) I also, just Good Charlotte as a band is so funny to me because they are so clearly the most corporate (laughs) goth thing ever where some record label was like, guys, (laughs) yeah, I've got an idea of how to make a lot of money. Good Charlotte. At least the other ones are kind of believable, but Good Charlotte was always so obviously... Corporate, yeah, but people fell for it. I feel like mm. MCR definitely lands more in the aesthetic that this fan fiction is doing mm-hmm. than Good Charlotte does. And then later they talk about like uh, Green Day a little bit. They talk about some bands where I'm like, the, you're going decidedly outside of your lane right now. They're not though because they were third. Team. <laughs> and <laughs> that's true. That's true. They didn't know what Elaine was. They just picked up the CDs that looked the coolest. Black. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can tell you, I was there. I lived this. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So Draco, in the big plot twist to end this chapter, asks Ebony if she wants to go to the concert with him. And now chapter three. We're making incredible time, I'd like to say. Yeah. (laughs) Doing a great job. During this author's note is where I realized that fangs meant thanks. It took me three chapters of author's (laughs) notes to be like, oh, she's saying thanks. (laughs) So it's the night of the concert. We get a very lengthy description of her gothic outfit. And the general gist of this and all future outfit descriptions. Lots of leather, Mm -hmm. lots of lace, Mm -hmm. lots of black. Mm -hmm. The accents are always pink or red or purple. Mm -hmm. There's also, and I think this is so fun, often it is just said there is, quote, some corset stuff. Yes. Either in the front or the back. (laughs) Never described. And I am not a wearer of corsets, but I do feel like if you just say some stuff, it is not very clear what you are saying. (laughs) Oh, it's clear to me. There are laces on this shirt that are non-functional. I (laughs) tell you, non-functional lace-up bit, which is just incredible. A belt buckle that doesn't do anything. It just is there. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I love it when when she's got it in the front and the back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're just like, yes, why? Why? That's nothing. Why? You look incredible. Incredible. It's just so fun in these descriptions because it happens for lace too, although where she'll just say some lace stuff. It's so funny <laughs> that this author will do five sentence long descriptions, but not take the full effort to say exactly what the lace is, <laughs> just to say like there's some lace stuff. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is the point in the story where my notes just start to say again with the fishnets. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is outfit description uh, number five. God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love I lo- this. Having the like outfit description counter in the bottom corner of the screen. Yes. Yeah. Mm. This is, Thank you, Kim. Yeah. You are doing such a service. As long as outfit descriptions outrank chapters, I am happy. <laughs> Well, we're ahead already. Thank God. So then Ebony drinks some blood, of course, course. and leaves. 
Draco picks her up in his flying car, <laughs> which at first I was like, flying car? Oh, yeah. The, those kind cars. of I exist. I had that same thought. <laughs> <laughs> Who's canon? Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that it's a Mercedes Benz. It actually kind of evoked, this wasn't out yet, but you know how Edward drives a Volvo in Twilight? Oh, uh-huh. uh-huh. yeah. That kind of big European car in with the vampire and, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> drawing some parallels here. I mean, I do think it is funny because they go on to say Mercedes-Benz feels very Draco on brand. The thing about... I have not read Twilight, so I don't know exactly Edward's character. He doesn't seem very safe, which is what mm-hmm. Volvo screams to me is safety. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you really want to go Pacific Northwest, he should have been driving a Subaru. Because yeah. I lived in Seattle for two years. Everybody has a Subaru. Yeah. I feel like that would have been the more Forks Washington choice right. for Edward. But I do think that Mercedes-Benz, a flying Mercedes-Benz, does work pretty well for rich, snooty kid Draco Malfoy. Yeah, and you gotta have the 666 license plate on there. It's good. Does he? Oh my god. He does. Yeah, he has a vanity plate, which... Big yikes, but a 666 <laughs> vanity plate, oh, powerful it's a great choice. Touch. What a get. It's a great touch. This is, I think, the first time that the author starts to insert Satanism mm. into the fan fiction, mm-hmm. which is extremely intriguing to me because it, you know, brings up like, what are wizards' relationship with Satan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never gets addressed, obviously. And the other thing is, it is so clear that this author, intentionally for the purposes of this story, Satanism is just an aesthetic. Yes. Satanism just means I am also a goth and I draw pentagrams sometimes. Yes. Yeah. It has nothing to do with actual theology. Yep. Yeah. It's just, oh, they're doing a really good job sent, doing a send up of mall goth. <laughs> <laughs> and I suspect they probably were a mall goth, which is how they do such a good job. Lots of references to Hot Topic, but none to Spencer's gifts, which did seem surprising to me. Maybe their mall didn't have one. Yeah. Mm, Maybe that was it. Maybe it was regional. (laughs) So they are going to the concert. And here's what I think is a ridiculous addition. Simple plan is the opening act. Just like as a side note. Just very, very much swept under the rug. As a side note in Draco's outfit description. What? Yeah. I love Simple Plan. They are fantastic. The What's New Scooby-Doo theme song slaps so So fucking hard. And I can't believe that they are the opening act. And I can't believe that this is not a bigger deal. So then proving that Ebony slash the narrator slash the author is definitely not a cop, they quote both smoke cigarettes and drugs. And drugs. <laughs> some drugs. They smoke uh, some drugs. Hello, would you like to do some drugs? <laughs> <laughs> This is like a, it just feels like a dare video to me. Yes. Don't smoke (laughs) drugs, kids. Mid 2000s, just saying the word drugs was funny. Yeah. (laughs) Drugs. (laughs) Oh, man. So they arrive at the concert and they start moshing to Good Charlotte. And now I am furious because did they miss Simple Plan? Yeah. Did they show up late? They showed up late. Come on. They were too busy smoking drugs. Yeah. Uh, Ah, yes, of course, of course. (laughs) What fools. So at the concert, Ebony out loud says that Joel looks so hot, and this makes Draco very sad, but she says, don't worry, I like Draco more than you, and besides, Joel is dating Hilary Duff, and I hate that bitch, Hilary Duff. Oh my Her word's not mine. Now, I do know a little bit about this relationship. Isn't Joel, like, wasn't he, like, in his 30s, and wasn't Hilary Duff, like, 18? She was 16, and he was 24. I looked it up. What My the guy, absolute come fuck? on! Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gross, 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 gross. <laughs> awful stuff. Awful, yeah. awful, awful stuff. This is back when Hilary Duff was really big. Yeah, yeah. And I was a huge Hilary Duff fan. I loved mm-hmm. Hilary Let Duff. Let the rain fall down. So no, yesterday, yeah. mm-hmm. Cinderella story. Uh, yes, we have a great Cinderella story reference later in the story. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love that. I think it's so funny that the author makes a point to hate Hilary Duff and hate on her several times. It's So so this is where it is so clear that this person either is or was into a goth phase because that's the kind of poll that you have to know. Like you can (laughs) pretend to know about goth stuff and say you like this band and you can look up the lead singers. But to be so specific that you know that I am supposed to hate Hillary Duff contractually, Mm -hmm. I'm legally (laughs) obligated to hate Hillary Duff as a goth. Mm -hmm. God, it's so good. (laughs) 
Amazing. Oh, uh. So the concert ends. They drink beer, regular <laughs> beer. <laughs> Smoke drugs, drink beers. Uh, and then they get photos and autographs with the band. Apparently they had backstage passes. Uh, <laughs> they just have such a good time and I'm really happy for them. <laughs> they just seem like they're having fun and I'm glad that they are having a good time. Yeah. So then they head back to Hogwarts, but not really because Draco drives the car into the Forbidden Forest instead. Dun, dun, dun. And then we get into chapter four. What is also so great about this is that every chapter ends on a cliffhanger. Yes. Every mm-hmm. single one. Got yes. it. It's so good. And the way they write the cliffhangers, they'll like, they have the first half of whatever sentence and then they'll do a huge amount of ellipses and then we'll get a cliffhanger ending. Every time. It's so great. <laughs> and they're beautiful. And then it, depending on what website you read it on, sometimes the page breaks are made out of a till days. So it's just squiggle, mm-hmm. squiggle, squiggle, squiggle all the way, which I really appreciate. Gotta love it. So chapter four, we... Now have an author's note, and this is the beginning of the theme of Tara clapping back at her critics. Yes. Because people are now finding this fanfic and they're saying mean things about it. And at one point, this also is the start of the theme of Ebony spelling her name incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And what we learn here, and this is so fun because some of these jokes, you have to read the sentence and then think, what? And then realize... (laughs) Oh, you you have to (laughs) next level piece it together and it's worth it every time. Yeah, it helps to like read it out loud sometimes to figure out what word they're trying to say. (laughs) I had to do that. And thankfully, my wife Kelly was playing video games with headphones in so she couldn't hear me saying out loud. Because ever since the fangs thing I didn't get, I had to keep mouthing things out loud to try to get the jokes. (laughs) So I didn't look like a ridiculous human being sounding out things such as, quote, Ebony's name is, all caps, Enneby, and not Mary Sue, S-U, okay? And that's when I realized, oh, people are saying that Ebony is a Mary Sue, Mm -hmm. but Tara, intentionally or not, doesn't get what they're saying. They think they're just messing up the name. She's even gone as far as to spell Ebony's name wrong in the clarification here. And I just think it's so funny. Later on, it makes sense, but early on, if people were actually criticizing Ebony for this, or if this is just Tara making up people giving criticisms, I would not necessarily call Ebony a Mary Sue because she doesn't do anything in the first three chapters except wake up, drink blood, and go to a concert. (laughs) (laughs) It's not like she's someone that you're going to say, oh my goodness, no way. Good at basketball? Good at singing in the musical? Has great hair? (laughs) Troy Bolton, what? Like, There's no Mary Sue trends here yet. But later on with the second Mary Sue call out, it's so yeah. good and so worth it. Yeah. More specifically, later with the Marie Sue call out. Oh, if yeah, we, yeah. Marie must, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would guess that they were almost certainly being flooded with tens of reviews being like, take this down, delete this. You can't spell. These are all the things that are wrong with your story. Oh, your character is such a self-insert Mary Sue. Yeah. Websites can be so toxic. I can only assume that the feedback was filled with people that just did not get the joke. Yes. Just a collective group of whoosh people. A collective group of 12-year-olds. We should clarify. 12-year-olds <laughs> who did not get that this was a joke and were trying to be like critics. Mm. The comment sections of fanfiction.net are a wild place. (laughs) Yeah, I don't go there. Every once in a while I get curious if the author's like getting mad enough at the reviews. I'll go look (laughs) and I'll be like, oh god, oh why? Why would you be so mean? No flames. Have we found the one place that is worse than the YouTube comment section on Earth? Uh, I think they're probably maybe on par. On par. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is about people providing free content that makes other people so absolutely furious. Yeah. <laughs> we are all well aware of that. I've gotten some uh, angry messages anytime an episode was late before I went full time oh. with podcasting. I had people being furious that wow. what this free podcast isn't going to be uploaded before I commute to work. Oh, you geez. fucking asshole. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what am I going to oh. listen to on my commute now? <laughs> my own thoughts? Never. There's a really great band, uh, Good Charlotte, uh, MCR. <laughs> you could put those on. Oh, my goodness. Great. Yeah, Gosh. no, the review uh. section on ff.net is horrible. So they're in the Forbidden Forest. They get out of the car. And here's just a, a direct quote. I stared into his gothic red eyes, and now in parentheses, he was wearing color contacts, (laughs) which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness. 
just oof. Oh, oof, oof, oh. oof. And Ebony realizes why she loves Draco all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Fuck. Just, uh. Uh. So Draco kisses her. They make out. And here's a, another fun trend is just, I don't know if like a thesaurus, is there a dictionary that only has adverbs in it? Because <laughs> the adverb choices yes. that this author makes yes. are so wild They're because so much wild. like every color being described with another word for that color, mm-hmm. pretty much every verb gets an adverb. Yeah. And they make out keenly <laughs> against the tree, which is not oh. even in the top 100 adverbs I would <laughs> think came to mind. Another one of my favorite bits that this author is doing is writing this as if they were a kid trying to write how their English teacher, they think their English teacher told them to. Yeah. yeah. So they're adding a lot of unnecessary adjectives, usually like two or three in succession that will sometimes contradict each other. (laughs) So many (laughs) adverbs. Just like clear abuse of the thesaurus. <laughs> I think that's such a funny bit. Whenever there's a section of dialogue, they'll go back and forth just clearly avoiding using the word said mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> in just an absolutely beautiful way. There's some ones where you get weird things like saying expelled yes. to mean yell and stuff like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, it really reminds me of something that I certainly did in fifth grade, which was using Microsoft Word for different English projects. And then if I felt like I kept saying the same adjective, right clicking on it and then the five synonyms would pop up and then just picking one of those so that you didn't keep saying things. And the most clear memory I have of this is in fifth grade, I was working on something during a free period in our classroom and I had used the word weird and strange too much. So I was trying (laughs) to find synonyms and I right clicked on weird and one of the options was queer and I was 11 and I had no idea of any other context for this word. And I also don't know if in the year 2003 that yeah, I don't think Queer Eye for the Straight Guy had come out yet, so I don't know if it was like that pervasive, but I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's a fun word. I like QU words, and I just put that in an English paper in fifth grade, <laughs> and I have no idea what my teacher thought of me. <laughs> <laughs> they probably thought, oh, Mike found the thesaurus button. <laughs> I really think that's probably what they did, <laughs> but that is the energy that is in this writing. Yes, it is absolutely. a huge right-click on Microsoft Word synonym selection. Love it. Clippies up here saying, hey, it looks like yeah. you're trying to write a fanfic. Energy. <laughs> so as they as they keenly oh. make out, which, gosh, keenly, like, like <sighs> does someone just... walk by and just go, neat? Like, that's <laughs> keen and neat are just the exact same word to me. <laughs> so they then undress and then just, I, I, even though I haven't read a lot of fanfic, I know that intimacy comes into play all of the time. Mm-hmm. And just the first instance of a romantic description here, quote, mm-hmm. he even put his thingy into my you know what mm-hmm. hyphened throughout you hyphen no hyphen what. And we did it for the first time. Mike, <laughs> here's the thing about this description of sex. We have read more earnest descriptions of sex that are about at this level, yeah, <laughs> in fan fictions that were not meant to be funny. Yes, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Pretty sure. Can never be positive, but yes, <laughs> this is actually not that heightened from how sex is written <laughs> in fan fiction. <laughs> yeah, this oh. is pretty par for the course. <laughs> so good, so good. So then, of course, Dumbledore catches them, and he yells in all caps, "What are you doing, you motherfuckers?" <laughs> And this quote may seem innocuous, but this quote (gasps) will fuel author's notes for chapters to come. Yeah, yeah. I had to go look it up uh, what year Goblet of Fire came out, the movie. Oh, yeah. That movie came out in 2005. This (gasps) came out in 2006. I think this is a pretty clear reference. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And then I'm guessing the reviewers didn't get that and then they uh, fight about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's the first fight about it. Chapter five. The author blames Dumbledore's cussing on him having a headache (gasps) and then also being mad at them having sex. The first time they mentioned this, the headache thing is so funny. But as you will see, this keeps coming up over and over and over again. And just that being the justification for Dumbledore having a complete change of character (laughs) is so funny, especially in a fanfic where people just become vampires Mm willy-nilly, but 
She is still dedicated to trying to defend any instance of why people act differently. And the justifications are always so, so good. absurd. It's mm-hmm. so good. Nowadays, you just get tags on AO3 that say this character's OOC out of character. Mm. And we just move on. Yep. We We've go for grown it. past this, I think, in a really mature way. <laughs> gotcha. 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 This need to have every character be canon compliant, I think, was very pervasive in the fanfiction community at the time. Wouldn't you agree, Sequoia? Uh, Yeah, I would definitely agree. So you had to have a reason, like a headache, for anyone (laughs) to do something that people thought they wouldn't have done previously. But this is clearly clearly a play on on that on that need mm-hmm. it's uh, it's so funny back in time for any fan fiction where snape was actually a good guy did they have to say oh snape is not the worst that's why he's out of character here like did they have to <laughs> Sometimes they would, clarify think, that yeah. in every fanfic <laughs> yeah there's always been that segment of the fandom that's like snape's a good guy guys yeah snape's really oh yes We also call those people incorrect. So (laughs) if you didn't think that the quote, what are you doing, you motherfuckers, could be topped by Dumbledore, you clearly weren't prepared for the next quote, which is, you ludicrous fools, but ludicrous spelled like the rapper ludicrous. Woo! It's so good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so good. So funny. Uh, oh, gosh. dang, I need to circle back to the author's note. I'm sorry. Oh, um, yes, please, yes. This is the first time we get the author a classic of fan fiction. The author saying they're not going to update until they get enough good, good reviews. reviews. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if this was oh, a trope or just a thing yes. for my immortal. Okay. No, it is such a trope. And it then what I love is when they're in our word count and I find those because they didn't get enough good reviews. Yeah, and they just stopped writing, and it's very sad. You play chicken with the audience, and you lose. Yeah, Yeah. but uh, Tara can't be stopped. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. So Dumbledore makes them come with him, and Ebony then cries tears of blood, which, of course, she does. Is it a goth thing, or is it a vampire thing? Both, yes, and? (laughs) Okay, goths are vampires. Next. (laughs) Right. Yeah, in this world, goths are vampires and they're mm. satanic. Right, right, right. <laughs> so Dumbledore brings them to Snape and McGonagall. I like that they still keep to the canon of if someone does something wrong, Dumbledore brings them to Snape and McGonagall. <laughs> and they have to explain what happened. McGonagall calls them mediocre dunces. And I just love that even in a ridiculous, comedic, over the top fanfic, McGonagall is still iconic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She consistently gets the best lines in this whole story. Mediocre dunces? <laughs> she does. Crushing blow! <laughs> oh, uh. Gosh. So they, there's some back and forth between the teachers and the students about why they did this. And ultimately, Draco says that he did it because he loves Ebony. And I don't even know if there is any backstory besides from them starting to date yesterday, I guess. But because he loves Ebony... They are now free to go. Yeah, they don't get in trouble. They don't yeah. somehow. Mm-mm. They don't it's get love, in trouble, baby. and it's Snape okay. that's like, "Bye, yeah, <laughs> all right, okay, bye." It's nothing. <laughs> Snape knows what it's like to be young and in love. <laughs> no, that's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so Ebony goes into the bathroom to freshen up and to change another outfit change. Here, fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. Then Draco is waiting for her outside the bathroom door, and then he sings a good Charlotte song when she exits, mm-hmm. and she swoons over it. And that is the end of is chapter he five. Singing the entire song a cappella. I need to know. I would assume so. I would assume so. The only other option would be, you know, 2006, you've got iPod touches. You've got phones that play music out of them. (laughs) The only thing is like maybe he's playing and singing along to it out of the (sighs) built-in terrible speakers from his small device. That would also be really good. Either way, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's got a hit clip. Ooh, hit clip. hit clip. And he only (laughs) sings one minute of the song. (laughs) I remember I had a friend of mine, Murphy Kate. She absolutely loved NSYNC and she had every NSYNC hit clip and the best hit clip was Bring In Da Noise by NSYNC because weirdly Ooh. instead of being like 15 seconds or 30 seconds it was a good minute and a half huh. for wow. some reason the Bring In Da Noise hit clip was way longer <laughs> This is a hit clip conspiracy that we're unearthing right now. (laughs) 
It was really good. And especially because the chorus of Bring In The Noise is so good. So with the hit clip, it would just cut immediately to Bring In The Noise, <laughs> Bring Down The House. <laughs> Uh, so oh. that's going to be the end of this oh. first episode covering My Immortal. I think we'll have better pace throughout where this is not going to be an eight episode <laughs> run. <laughs> I told you. Oh, no. I warned you all. <laughs> Every sentence is beautiful. I love them. <laughs> uh, but Kim and Sequoia, thank you so much for joining. If people want to find you doing stuff, where can they do so? If you want to find both of us crying and laughing about Harry Potter fan fiction, you can find us on Fanatical Fix and where to find them wherever pods are cast. If you want some cool Sequoia stuff, though, you can find my other podcast, But Make It Scary, where we take romantic films and turn them into horror movies. Whoa. Also, anywhere pods are cast. Hey, Mike, thanks so much for having us on. Thank you. I'm so glad that we <laughs> could finally amazing. make this happen. Hopefully, your listenership appreciates that. Even if you're not covering it on your show now, they will get your voices discussing it. There's no <laughs> one else that I could talk about it with. So this is just... It's just, it's like the ultimate crossover of our two podcasts. We found it and it makes me so happy, especially because I just did seven episodes about the Fantastic Beasts movie franchise. So this is just the ultimate palate cleanser. We've had two months of me yelling at JK Rowling for being bad at everything. And now I'm just yelling into the sky about how perfect this fan fiction is, aside from the X moments, obviously. Uh, yeah. But aside from the gosh, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. This just, I'm so happy. I'm so happy again. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the person on the subreddit that made the thread, is the joy of Potterless gone? Uh, and writing about how I should shut down the podcast. Oh my God. Because the joy is back, baby. Back. My immortal has fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the fan Fandom is what gives me life. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. This is just, it's such a perfect parody. It's so perfectly tongue in cheek. And I'm so glad we're going to be talking about this for the foreseeable future. But again, thank you both so much for joining. Listeners, thank you for listening. And as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, before they put on their all leather, all lace, all corset, everything, wizard on. <laughs> Hey, here's something you might not have known. Multitude reserves 10 hours of staff time each month for free consulting and advice for members of underrepresented groups in audio. So if that is you, you can go to multitude.productions and click on free consulting today. Potterless is created by Mike Schubert. It is hosted by Mike Schubert. It is edited by Mike Schubert. It is produced by Mike Schubert as well as Vicky Garcia, Christine, Aaron Johnson, Klaus Rilo, Boomer, Chismo, Juan Sanfilio, Rosemary, Dodge, Marie, Lisa C. Keen, Audra, Eleanor Curlin, Nikita Power, Rachel Guthrie, Zachary Polito, Alex Consolver, John Cocker, Noel Basile, Claire Spencer, Rory Collier, Veronica Bartov, Alada Bartova, Noah, Tracy Toya, Colleen, Jennifer Marklu, Justin Montero, Jacob Parrish, Maya Gray, Mark Body, Polly Burge, Zena Rosnowski, Harlan Haskins, Noelia, Nikki Harris, Kine, Amanda Alfred, Kafir Shaltiel, Sarah Shetter, Marta Morrison, Maya Flor Sake, Georgia Davis, Skylar Lilly, Adele Ryan, Professor Threat, Ellie Hoskovchova, Michael David Yordi, Kelly Otilio, Kerry Crumpler, Connie Binkowski, Jen Went, Nedry OS, Will Huser, Marco Cepeda, Marie Rieger, Ashton Gabrielson, Brittany Gutierrez, Phelan, The Meadows Family, Ginny from the Block, Heather Langeel, Kevin Stewart, Jarls Fiven, Peter McGrath, Jan and Rose Dab, Callahan and Darius, Leah Reed, Bella Barlack, Melanie. Demi, Becca Spry, Reese Dignan, Adam Graham, Joseph Torp, Madison, Don't Call Me Nymphadora, Sabrina Balsiger, Sophia Loves Pigs, Farzan Jarabat, Melanie DeGrave, Matt Barger, Okamahime, Boney Pony, Kelsey Gillespie, Rike Mangor Jensen, Taylor Payne, Megan Moon, Riley Kitas, Laurel Happy, Erica Butler, Miranda, Kendra Hertz, Natanya Page, Yogan Shanley, Darcy Alexandra Harrison, Sandra Rose, Craig McRoberts, Lior Nachum, Demi Lynn, Michelle Spurgeon, Henrika Wolf, Casey Canales, Megan Stempen, Zat, Jack Gitzes, Sophia Leone, Dane Nemcher, Robin Garcia, Chick Parr, Mermaid and her Daddykins, Gregory Hughes, Caw Caw, Mother Feathers, Nina Jazalik, Ribbon Monstrous, Brittany Harper, Gavin Miller, Jack Parr, Serenity Allen, Emily Quinlan, Haley Hastings, Sabrina Casanova, Jenny Browers, Laura, Hila, Eileen Gazesh, Annette Pipitone, Kirsten R. Cunningham, Hufflepuff alumni, Brett Clausen, Mary Price, Artemis, Trans People or People, Samantha McNamara, Nina Campley, Tatiana Schmitova, Taylor Roberts, Karis Davies, Little Vomit Spiders Running Around, Tony Joe McHufflepuff, Punk Fish, Wire Warrior 4976, Catherine Carolchak, Joe Sander, Michael Peavy, Maya Saunders, Jasmine Ellis, Neely, Tate Sasson, Sam Sam Reeby, Adriana Hernandez, Steamed Nuggets, and Cat Eye Potter. Web design by Kelly Schubert, and the music is by Bettina. If you want to find us on social media, you can at facebook.com slash potterless, twitter.com slash potterless pod, instagram.com slash potterless podcast, and reddit.com slash r slash potterless. For any and all information about the show, as well as transcripts, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com. Bonus content lives at patreon.com slash potterless. Merch lives at potterlesspodcast.com slash merch. And that Kickstarter for the new project I'm launching lives at bit.ly slash modern muckraker. If you want to help out the show, telling someone that you think might like the show about the show really helps the show. Shoot them a message, say, hey, there's a 
this podcast Potterless. I think you'd like it. Or you could leave us a rating interview online or talk about us on social media. Anything word of mouth related really helps. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, wizard on! Yeah.